Hi there, I'm Claire Bestland, and I'm a guitar slinger, singer, songwriter, and composer who a few years ago ran to the hills of Wakefield, Quebec, and never left. And I'm really glad I stayed, because today I get to be your host of Udaway Live, the weekly arts magazine series devoted to showcasing the unique arts and culture of the Udaway region of West Quebec. Each episode, we showcase artists of all practices, as well as venues, galleries, and cultural performance spaces from all over the rural region of the Udaway. Now, ever since I came here, I've been wondering what it is about this area that attracts so many creative people of like mind. From artisans, to craftspeople, to musicians, visual artists, painters, writers, maybe there's something in the water. Now, if I keep talking like this, it might turn out you do have all day. But for now, why don't you kick back, relax, and come along for a ride with us to experience the artistic side of life right here on Udaway Live. Today on episode three of Udaway Live, we've got accordions, we've got violins, we've got bazookies. Yes, I said bazookies. And as always, we've got some guitars too, as Pat Marr, Matt Selleck, and Eva Vanderberg come together to perform right here at Le Fougere as Picatune. Now, Le Fougere is known for having award-winning cuisine, and we're gonna be speaking to the owners, Jen and Charlie Part, um, who are going to tell us about the everyday artistry of their restaurant family. And they're really excited to introduce us to a really bright, hardworking young man named Yannick LaSalle, who's the chef de cuisine here. And then just a hop, skip and a jump upstairs, we're going to be visiting Gallery Old Chelsea, a gallery owned by 10 different artists just upstairs from Le Fougere. And we'll be speaking to one of the artists there, Marilyn Smith, who is going to tell us a little bit about her life as an artist and painter and teacher and then she'll introduce us to some of the works of the other artists of the gallery. <laughs> well, we are Pikachu. Uh, we are four normally, but our fourth member is unable to be here today. Steve Renahan, our Boran player. But we have Pat Marr on guitar and bazooki. We have Eva Vanderberg on the fiddle, and myself on the accordion. And we're gonna do a couple of numbers from, uh, well, from a variety of places. So it's all traditional dance music, some of it from Newfoundland, some of it from uh, Ireland, some of it from Quebec. And we're going to start off with a set of what they call singles, which are like polkas, uh, from Newfoundland. And uh, you're going to kick us off. Thank you. 
player in, uh, in Newfoundland called Rufus Ginsher, who lived to be I think, 90 years old, and he was discovered, he's a fiddle player, and he was discovered in his, uh, sometime in his 70s, I think, as a fiddle player, and suddenly toured around the world, was awarded the Order of Canada, and uh, he, you know, he brought all these tunes forward that would otherwise have been lost, and we're going to do a set of them now. We call them Rufus's Jigs. <laughs> My name is Jennifer Warren Part, and uh, with my partner and husband, uh, Charlie Part, we opened here at Les Fouchères in 1993, um, where the, uh, Charlie was originally the chef, and uh, I helped in wherever I could and was doing the desserts for quite a while, and, uh, um, and now we're doing more um, on the, we have a, a store attached to the restaurant, 
and uh, that's where we spend most of our time now on a, working on a line of natural prepared foods that people can take home. My name is Yannick and I'm the dishwasher. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Yannick Lassalle, born in Utah, and I've been working with uh, Chef Charles and Jennifer since 2011. Um, in 2015, I got the opportunity to become chef de cuisine here at Les Fougères. My name is uh, Charlie Part. I'm married to Jennifer Mary Warren Part, <laughs> right? Well, we had our first restaurant was in uh, Toronto, in the beaches, and that would have been 1990, 1984. So, uh, and we had. No, no, we got married in 84, so it's 86. And uh, we had a restaurant there for seven years, realized we didn't really want to be in the city, and felt that this would be a nice change. And Charlie obviously had a lot more history in the business prior to us meeting. He, he was the chef at several places in Toronto, and then before that in London, UK, and trained in uh, Paris and London. And, um, and so we began to look um, and found ourselves in the Utuwe, gazing at this beautiful wooded property. And, um, and in 1993, we, we, after many years of looking at it and trying to f figure out a way of purchasing it, we, we managed to do so. And, and we started Le Fougere after six months of uh, renovations in 1993. In the 1940s when it was built, it was a dance hall. And uh, so it, there was it, no, no alcohol here, but there was like a bootlegger right across the street there. And they used to have wooden uh, platforms outside the building. And um, you know, in the early days when we came here, we'd have people who were in their 70s or 80s come in and say, I used to I used to dance here, and uh, so that's kind of lovely. Le Fougère is a little family. I've been uh, privileged to work closely with Chef Charles Park and Jennifer. We try to work closely with farmers, with the Four Seasons, with the garden that we have here in the summer. And you know, it's been uh, it's been quite the journey uh, from day one till now. Um, I've, I've learned a lot working closely with Jen and Charlie. Uh, schedules, ordering, um, you know, cooking, uh, sharing recipes. It's not just work here at Le Fougère. We've uh, become friends outside of it, and you know, it's it's an honor to be a part of this team. During the renovation, we asked Gordon. He had hung something of this particular view around the corner there in the years gone by in the old restaurant and it really affected us and it was sold and oh we were so sad <laughs> that we knew that some hope that uh, somewhere somewhere in life we could um, have it ha bring it back because it means so much to us and then Yannick was born funnily enough, right at the apex of that, <laughs> where Bristol Mills is, over in the far Pontiac there. That's I can see my house. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Marilyn Smith, um, an artist from uh, Wakefield, Quebec. I'm one of the owners of this lovely gallery, Gallery Old Chelsea. Well, I um, grew up in a large family, and um, we spent our summers at a cottage, and uh, at the cottage we pretty well had uh, our, our uh, whole life in nature, so I really got communicated with nature. I also grew up in a bit of chaos with all that, so I'm used to chaos. And so I always think about my art as starting off chaotic and trying to end up with something that is as organized and well composed. And I went to teacher's college with my husband. We got married and we both went to teacher's college and I started teaching all kinds of things, waiting for an art job to open up because there's only so many art teaching jobs available. And um, then I ended up teaching grade seven to 11, which in Quebec, of course, is high school. And uh, loving it, it's a uh, it's high energy job, um, but uh, you know, it's, there's nothing better for me to be working with uh, um, teenagers. I know people think they're difficult, but they're really very delightful most of the time. And uh, to be giving them skills and, and seeing that they are really feeling good about themselves and learning things they never thought they could do. 
very, very rewarding. One of the things about my art is, is that every piece I do is totally different from the piece before. <laughs> um, and my husband says when I come out, out of the studio and with a painting, like, well, well, where did that one come from? <laughs> so I don't wait to get inspired. Most artists will tell you if they waited to be inspired, they'd never get anything done. Because it's really, um, it's, it's work. You just have to get in there and do it. And um, I guess the hardest part's been the pandemic because what I find that works best for me is what I'm feeling very playful and, and I just start using the materials and, and letting them do their thing at the beginning and have a lot of fun and, and t take a lot of risks. And I and, uh, just didn't, didn't, didn't roll that way <laughs> for months and months and months. I was overdoing the paintings and I would start again and do it again and do it again. And anyways, it, just, it, was, it was kind of an eye opener that that was really essential to me to be feeling playful in order for it to really uh, come out the way I wanted it to. For this particular painting, I started in a way that I don't start very often, and that is I took paper, uh, papers that I made myself, papers from magazines, papers, uh, just uh, cardboard. You can see there's pieces of cardboard boxes on there. And I just covered the whole huge canvas with, uh, with most of it was colored papers. And uh, then I started painting on top of that. And, uh, I had found a photograph of, a, of, of the woman holding a child uh, in front of a window, but you really couldn't see her. She was just like a silhouette, but I really liked the pose. And so that's, that's where she came from. And it, it, just, it just happened very quickly, this one. Usually, <laughs> usually it, it, to, to, to get the final composition takes a lot of hard work. But this, this, this one actually flowed quite, quite easily, but it, it, it's paper underneath all of that, <laughs> which isn't the way I usually start. Yes, I am uh, one of the owners of this gallery, along with nine other artists. Uh, the uh, ten of us run it collectively, which means we, we share all of the work, all the expenses. So if you think about running a business, there are many jobs to be done, and so that we, we share all that. As well as working here, we don't hire people to work here. Uh, we all come in and work. So every time you come to the gallery, you meet an artist, and that's one of the special things about this gallery, is you, you come in and meet someone that uh, is invested in art. Well, the Gallery Old Chelsea is um, a, a very much a local gallery in that we um, are all, uh, the owners are all local. Uh, and I'm talking about uh, not just the Quebec side, but I always think of this as a twin city anyways, Ottawa, the whole area. And uh, so we're from both sides of the river. And uh, we have guest artists that come in um, that are juried into our guest artist space. And those also have to be local. Yeah, and we, we accept, um, you know, lots of diverse kinds of art. We like to represent more than just one kind. So we have a photographer as one of our uh, owners. We have uh, mixed media. We have watercolor artists, oil, acrylics, uh, and uh, we really look for a, a diverse uh, kind of approach so that when people come in, they're not just seeing all the same thing. And, and of course, glass art and jewelry and wearable art. And the uh, gallery was started uh, in uh, 1990. There were a group of artists that uh, thought it would be great to start an artist association for the uh, Quebec area. And, uh, and then they decided to start a little gallery. So they rented a uh, house at 10 Scott Street. It's um, now the Maison Bleu. And um, there, were, there were seven artists. It was a group of seven, which is kind of cute. And um, so from that, uh, it, it's just the, the artists that are the owners keep changing, of course, as people have, uh, that they, as they come and go for a variety of reasons. And um, at one point, that, made, that uh, location was sold, and uh, the, the owners at the time decided to rent this space instead. And uh, both spaces were beautiful. The uh, little house was really eclectic, and the, the, all the little rooms were stuffed full of art. And, it was it was fun, but uh, this this uh, this area has less maybe a little less room, but so tons of light. People come around the corner and, and enter this gallery, and their their jaws just drop. They just uh, they love the venue, and it's it's a very welcoming, uh, light filled area, which is great for art. One of the artists is the glass artist, so she's she's uh, doing a, a different kind of stained glass, where she's uh, actually using glass that she finds. Um, not every piece, but she'll reuse crystal. So all that crystal that grandma can't give to anybody anymore because nobody wants it, she'll, she'll melt it down and use bits of it or, or in, into her art. We have a jewelry artist. I'm, I'm wearing a piece by Nancy Sutton right now. Uh, so we have that kind of art as uh, one, of the, one of the owners. 
a photographer, uh, Rob Filion, who uh, used to be a, a, a photographer th for the National Gallery. And then we have encaustic artists, watercolor, oil, mixed media, and acrylic. About six years ago, a couple of the artists here uh, went to the, the local elementary school and did some classes with the grade six class there. And then we gave them a whole week uh, to show in our guest gallery for free. They didn't have to pay. And uh, it's so uh, exciting for them to have artists come in and teach them and then to actually have their art hanging in, in the gallery. And then I started doing it in Wakefield. I did it for a few years with the grade sixes in Wakefield. And um, it, it, that's a, a fantastic community event. We also have um, soirees that we combine with Les Fougères and uh, sell tickets so that people can come in and have a special evening here. We give them a percentage off and uh, mill around and, and talk to the artists and have a drink and some hors d'oeuvres and then go downstairs, all of us, for a, a fabulous dinner. So all, these, all this music was originally for dancing. Traditional dances, square dances, set dances, that kind of thing. Uh, you know, whether in Ireland or, or Newfoundland. And in this case, these ones are from Quebec. Uh, where there, of course, is a you know, very rich uh, square dancing culture. So we'll give them a whirl here at a, at a decent pace. At a dancer's pace. <laughs> at a dancer's and a player's pace. <laughs> moved here I didn't really know that I would become a part of the music scene but it was so inviting and so welcoming and it's a small enough group that everybody can have a place and be recognized and there's a lot of collaboration so I found it very very welcoming and encouraging there's there's a spot for everybody if you want to take part and so much crossover you've got jazz rock folk many elements of folk there's instrumental there's vocalists and uh, we all seem to like to have our hands in each other's projects and uh, so a lot of crossover with the styles and you, you end up with a, a great a great blend and the number of musicians per capita is just astounding and if you want to hear more Pikachu Stay tuned. You can find us online on YouTube. We've got a YouTube channel and a bunch of stuff up there. And uh, there'll be an album on the way, hopefully, sometime this year.